I want to show you how incredibly rare and how incredibly fine-tuned each constant is. I'll give you a couple of illustrations to, to illustrate this for you. Imagine that we were to take our North American continent and we were to stack so that there is not a single square inch anywhere on the continent that does not have a dime on it. In other words, we're going to get all kinds of dimes out and we're going to put them all over the entire North American continent so that every dime is touching every other dime and there's no spaces in between. Could you imagine how many dimes we're talking about? A lot of dimes. Now let's imagine that we begin stacking on each of those dimes. And we stack the dimes all the way, covering the entire North American continent, all the way to the moon. Okay? Sound good so far? It's not enough. Let's increase that by one billion times more. Now, you're getting an idea of how many dimes we have. That's a lot of dimes. Agreed? Now, imagine I was to blindfold you and tell you that there is one red dime in that stack. All I need you to do is to pick it. What are the odds that you would pick the one red dime? Well, these are the odds in numerical, this one in a 10 to the 37th chance. That is the same level of precision that is involved in the, um, the strong nuclear force that holds together. If you're off by just a, a dime in either direction, we don't get a universe that supports life. If you're off by a dime in either direction, do you see how finely tuned this force is? Let me put it to you another way. What if I said all you have to do is to get a 22 rifle and hit this bullseye? Now, the bullseye is one inch wide, and you, all you have to do is hit it. And I said, okay, that doesn't seem too hard, right? A lot of you are good shots here. You could probably hit that bullseye from wherever you are in the room. How many of you think no, no matter where you are in the room, you can hit that bullseye? Raise your hand. That's a lot of good shots. I'm going to get out of your way. But what if I told you that the bullseye was actually at the opposite end of the observable universe? <laughs> One inch wide, opposite end of the observable universe. Now if you hit it, this is pretty wild. As a matter of fact, the odds are not great. It's a 1 in 10 to the 60th chance. And that is exactly what the calibration is of the mass density of the universe. One inch off the target in either direction, and you don't have a universe like ours. Do you see how finely tuned this, this constant is? This is why a, a, theorist, a, a, a theoretical physicist you might know from television says it this way. It's shocking to find out how many of our familiar constants of the universe lie within a very narrow band that makes life possible. If a single one of these accidents, he calls them accidents, did you see what he calls them? If a single one of these accidents were altered, stars would never form, the universe would fly apart, DNA would not exist, life as we know it would be impossible, Earth would flip over and freeze, and so on. He's being serious. And he believes that this level of fine-tuning is purely an accident. Isn't that interesting? It's amazing to me how many thoughtful, smart people are willing to ignore the fine-tuning of the universe and say it's just an accident. Really? So if, 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 if Mickey Okaku was sitting at a poker table in Vegas, he's just sitting there playing cards, and the house deals his, you know, his friends, two of his friends, and they finally deal him, and they say, okay, and they deal themselves. And, and Mickey is sitting over here, and he's like, yeah, okay, cool. Looks at his cards, he's going, oh, gosh, I got a good hand here. I'm going to bet some money on this. And he bets everything he has or everything he can think of. He puts it all on the table. And then the house turns over their cards, and they've got a royal flush. Ugh, really? I thought I had a good hand. Now, in his mind, he, if he knew the odds of, of the house dealing themselves a royal flush from a single deck, that would be 10 to the 5.813, a 1 in 650,000 chance of dealing yourself a royal flush. 
That's why you should never play those, those uh, poker machines and hoping for the royal flush. Oh, I've got three of the, four, of the five cards, and you're going to actually, hoping you get a one in 650,000 chance, really? So I can see, though, if he's playing cards here, and he might get frustrated and say, okay, well, and, I mean, it does happen, right? I mean, you, maybe you've seen it. That it's possible to get a royal, it's not that outrageous. Okay, so he stays in the game, and they deal a second hand. And now he looks at his second hand, and he goes, oh, my gosh, a straight flush. That's good, right? So what else can I, he puts his house on the line, okay? He mortgages his house, puts his bet, and sure enough, Another royal flush. Really? What are the odds of somebody dealing themselves two consecutive royal flushes with one? Uh, really? You want what they are? They're this. I think at this point, most reasonable people would say, nay, nay. <laughs> something's, not, something's not legit here. I'm I'm out. But no, no, he's committed to his worldview, so he stays in. <laughs> and sure enough, the house deals three royal flushes. What are the odds of this happening? Pretty high. Do you see our number so far? Well, that number... How does that relate to some of our universal constants? Let me show you the number, for example, of the strength of gravity, the calibration. I want you to see what this number is, just so you have a sense. How many royal flushes would you have to deal in a row to approximate this number? A bunch. It turns out you would need six royal flushes in a row to get to the calibration for gravity, which is... Now, how many does it take to get to this calibration? This is the calibration necessary for quarks. Now, if you know anything about physics, I won't go into all the details, but these are the kind of, I've written it out here for you. The mass is associated with particles. This is really about the nucleus of the atom and how these hold together. You have to have a certain ratio of these. If it's too high or too low, you don't get atoms to form, <clears throat> blah, 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 blah. But how do I get to this number? That's a high number. How many royal flushes am I willing to sit through well, it turns out you would have to have 12 royal flushes to approximate that number in a row. What about the precision required to calibrate the energy density of space? That's 10 to the 90th power. That means you've got to sit at the table, and he takes that same deck of cards, and he deals himself not 12 in a row, but a bunch more in a row. So it seems to me, if, if Mikio Kaku is so committed to his worldview that he refuses to believe that something is... Tan Are you really going to sit through that many royal... Before you'd say, get away from me, this is all a scam. There's no way you can deal that many... To deny that God, that somebody, something has fine-tuned the, the universe and the constants in the universe would be as stupid as sitting there and allowing somebody to deal themselves 28 royal flushes in a row and not get up from the table. Now, if, you, if this happened to you, you're gone. Two royal flushes in, you're gone, right? If it happens twice, you're out of there. Yet, these smart people would allow themselves to be dealt this 28 times and still say, yeah, this is the way it is. I guess I'm unlucky. <laughs>